All right, so we're gonna be taking a look at blocking out in Game Engine as opposed to blocking out inside of Blender. So a lot of times you might wanna have like a gym map set up or an environment you're working on, whatever the case, and uh, you need assets to make your game function and work and play around with walls and stuff. So um, it's always best to get into the Game Engine because now you can actually kind of run around and you know see what, see what you're working on and see how it looks and size-wise and it might play out and stuff like that. So uh, just keep that in mind. You, usually want to get into engine as fast as possible for that reason because if you don't have that interaction with the objects you're making all is lost kind of um, if you're working off like the mannequin or um, quinn or manny um, third person or first person templates from unreal you know, that might be like a standardized setup for unreal generally speaking but in some instances your characters are going to be much bigger than that and so therefore your, your models might look small. Even if they're modeled off real-world scales, they're probably too small, to be honest. So, um, so with that in mind, here in Unreal Engine, we have uh, modeling tools right here. Unity is going to have the Pro Builder tools, and it's just an extension you have to add, but it's pretty much the same process over there. And so we can create things like boxes, or we can draw out polygons. You might want to turn on snapping on the grid here. It's extremely useful. And so... But you can start more or less clicking around and say you need some kind of shape like this, right? There you go. You've now created a mesh that's really simple. It could be a blockout mesh right there by itself. So just keep that in mind. Some kind of like wall or something or whatever the case, right? Now, um, what we want to do instead is make something a little bit more useful. So let's do a rectangle or excuse me cube it's a square cube say we need a desk or something like that um, so we create that now we can actually go into um, right here you'll see there's a poly model poly edit this is pretty much what you're going to use maybe not for the most part but there's a lot of tools in here there's like some little sculpting tools and I'm pretty sure you can boolean somehow in here and all that fun stuff so uh, anyways with that in mind we got this made like so uh, we're making a desk of sorts so let's say we just uh, move that face up, all right? And now we can get in here and easily tell if we were um, to run around this thing. Well, that's about right, right? About height-wise, maybe a little tall. So, see how quick that is? It's just like, yeah, yeah, we find out real quick. All right. And so we can keep working on it. If maybe, if maybe it was too tall. Back below it real quick. It's probably all kinds of cool little tricks on using these. I haven't had enough time to play with them, but I still prefer blocking out in Blender personally. But it's just because I'm more comfortable over there and I can get my models one to one with Unreal Engine. So, uh, but anyway, so we need a desk. Might do something like that. All right. And we can do like loop cuts as well. So, believe it or not, there's a uh, insert edge loops right here. So we can do loop cuts, do a little one here, and also mirror these things somehow. So just keep that in mind, there's all kinds of tools, but the idea of block out is just to get the rough idea going, not really to make like super refined artwork, right? Generally speaking. So we'll go to poly edit, just like that one. Shift and select that one. Now we can do an extrude. You can see right here, we're going to extrude it down to the base. We've got a table. Hey, how about that? You do this for houses and all kinds of stuff. Um, I don't need a cone. But uh, what I do need more than anything is to place the pivot point here. Pivot points are extremely important, right? And so odds are this is going to go up against a wall somewhere. I guarantee it almost. And so our pivot point. Um, there's an option in here for it. It might be in here, but right there. Pivot. See all that? Just use pivot. So if we're snapping to the grid at 10 centimeter increments, we should be able to place that right on the floor, no problem. You see right there, right? And so if we were to slide that against the wall, obviously it would be like no gap there whatsoever between that prop and the wall. So 
Uh, we need to click accept. Sometimes that can be pretty important to click accept, otherwise it won't confirm like what you've done and you'll lose it all. So just keep that in mind. And so now if we had a table against the wall, there we go. We might have something like that. All right, so we can have multiple tables against the wall, potentially. Right? If I do Alt, drag, can line these up one to one like so. No gap in between them, but see what's going on now, right? Okay, and so this one, we're going to delete this one because we deleted it, but we don't need it. This one is created. This is what it looks like. Um, unfortunately, you can't like just click here and do edit, export it for whatever reason. I don't know. Maybe there's another way to export it. I don't know about. Um, let's go ahead and um, go over to the asset itself in the asset browser. And you'll see that we can do asset actions, export, and then... Um, Let's delete that one real quick. Let's try that again. So this is box number, whatever, 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 right? Boom. And so when we export, we use the default settings. I'm not changing nothing. I'll go to Blender, delete the default cube. I'm going to import FBX. I'm not going to change any of the settings here either. Just default import. This actually comes in at scale, so it's pretty nice. See here, that's exactly what we got. Um, if you want to work off of this mesh, you could just select it all in edit mode, go to face selection, right click, and do triangles to quads. It might clean it up quite a bit, it might not. You can see it still has a number of things going on. We can press X, limit dissolve, and you might want to change your limit dissolve amount to something like 0 0.05 as well. So we'll get this kind of a result now. And um, so it's a very good base to just start working off of, right? All right, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and I'm just going to use box cutter real quick kind of dice this thing up a little bit, add some interest to it. So we can now use our tools in Blender however we see fit. I just want to knock these ones back a little bit perhaps. Or there, you know, that's not perfect, obviously. That's probably the wrong way of doing it, but um, you get the idea. You can do things as you need them, right? Uh, maybe I want a little box on the ground, who knows, right? And so you can add things to this as well. It's not going to hurt. Say so we got like a little stack of boxes under here. Maybe, maybe we got like a waste basket over here. Okay, but that would that's outside the footprint of the way it was used in the game engine. So you couldn't really do that. Maybe we have like a, a computer screen or something. We'll continue blocking out here, I guess. But this is where you would do all your art, basically. The art aspect of it. Is. You might have like a computer screen. You might have keyboard. I can do local here because I rotated that, but. Local rotations, there, keyboard. And a computer. Generally speaking, props. Might want to add those later. They're all props, so. Find props together, make prefabs with them if needed, or set it up in a way where you can just have randomly generated um, objects on tables, which also works. But just, just for demo purposes, we're doing from box cutter off the set. Get that all lined up. Right, cool. So here's the thing. Uh, we're gonna sharpen all these, or weight the normals on them as well. It's in hard ops. I could do them all at the same time. Ooh, <laughs> maybe you don't wanna do them all at the same time. That did not go the way I thought it would. Probably a bug. Seem like a bug, didn't it? Okay, convert it all to a mesh. Bam. You might want to um, add a triangulation to it to bring it back in Unreal Engine. So triangulate, generally speaking, and uh, keep normals is what you're looking for. So you hold Alt while clicking that. It should have done it to all of them. Hard Ops applies to triangulate to everything. Otherwise, you got to do it one by one manually, I think. So uh, we can do that number. Insets, extrudes. 
right? Whatever you got to do, whatever your objects you got to make. And so all in all, when this is done, you could worry about size later on. It's at the right size here in Blender. It will go back into Unreal Engine. Um, you'll probably have to scale it up by 100. There's a trick that I'll explain in another video, perhaps, that's uh, where you can make everything import at one from Blender. It's actually really useful. And I don't know if it works on armatures. I want to test it with armatures and stuff first, um, and bones and all that before we go down that rabbit hole, right? Say, so I'm selecting this as the active object. It should use that origin point if if we do it that way. It should. I'm not promising you it will, but it should. All right. And so this is where it gets interesting. You can, um, when you export all your models from the game to blockout models, create like a blockout model folder, and then Wherever you're going to end up going with your new files, save them somewhere else so you always have your blockout and your, your updated model. So if you ever needed to block out again, you could go access it, right? And um, just doing selected objects. Default settings for the most part. Uh, you could turn geometry. Oh, here, let's do uh, five. I got a preset set for UE5, but it, you do smoothing by face or edge or whatever, right? You can do one of those. So... I think Unreal Engine 5 likes face and then 4 likes edge or something weird like that anyway. So, all right, we're going to re-export it out as the same file name, basically. I'm going to replace the one there because I'm not too worried about this. But now here in the engine, you're going to realize, like, you think right-click, re-import. You can't re-import it. So um, what you can do is you can just import a new file. In this case, FBX I just exported. It's going to ask to replace it to overwrite the existing um, asset, you can click yes, okay? And then it's gonna ask you for the file again, and it's gonna say this number. You can uh, reset to FBX, or just click done. I'm gonna reset to FBX, and it updates like so. I believe it's using automatic, like your automatic settings for re-import, because it doesn't really prompt you for it. So let's take a look. It should be Nanite if that's the case. And it's it's nanited right now, I think. Yeah. Not very. No, it's not. It is not nanite. There's no clusters. If there are clusters, they're just really basic. Bizarre. Anyway, so um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Let's get that off you here. There you go. And so. You do want to apply nanite and all that. You go double click, right? Go in here and change your settings. No, it did build nanite. Okay. Wait, build reverse index. No, that's reverse index. Wait, you know what was me? What's the nanite setting? It's in here somewhere. Yeah, build nanite. So yeah, I use my automatic FBX import. So this should have a scale. Nope, build scale's at one right now. Distance is one. Import scale. All right, cool. I guess it came in at a one. It's interesting. That generally doesn't happen, but you go back to just uh, select mode now. So there you have it. You now have a, um, a prop made quick and in a hurry. At least a block out. Um, so, you know, you can block it out in Unreal. Figure out what you might need and where, how you want to work something into an environment. And then not touch, not such a big deal now, right? Like if you got a computer lab, it's like, oh, yeah, the same asset just gets updated across the board. Like it's nothing from Blender to... Um, um, so you would have to UV map, um, set up a material for it or all your materials for it, and then we'll probably reassign those materials to that model. But um, you can also... If you're lucky, I, I have had it work sometimes and sometimes not work, where you make the material name in Blender, and when you import the FBX file, it just automatically uses the material in Unreal if it exists. Generally speaking, that will work too, so it just depends. But nonetheless, we now have uh, some computer props that are started at least, and we can go further with those however we choose fit. So maybe you don't want to put so much unique details here, but maybe just the tower and then monitor and a keyboard. Then you can throw like biscuits or pizza boxes or whatever all over the place and do that later on.
So you get the idea, though. Anyways, that's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I will check you out in the next one. All right, take care.